get back to stocks and your portfolio and the big picture. Mish Schneider is with us, chief strategist at marketgauge.com. Thank you for being with us. So how's 2024 feeling? How's it shaping up as we're heading into a new month on Monday? Well, hey, Nicole. You know, it's been a, it's been a great year. I, know, I think no one can deny that if you knew where to put your money and follow the momentum of the tech stocks, there was a great amount of money to be made. Same thing with certain commodities, particularly the precious metals and copper. And a few other areas around the board, we have found that the small caps, the ones with good growing, uh, growing earnings potential, uh, were also a great place to put money. And yet at the same time, our formula has always been when you catch these big moves to take profit. And I think that's really something hopefully a lot of retail investors have learned, which is not to be so passive, but instead ride the wave and get out and have trailing stops. So the question is, where are we going now for the second half of the year? And I was pretty convinced that we were heading into a major stagflationary period. We've seen contraction in certain areas of the economy, as we well know. And even PCE, even though the good news is, is that it may not be so inflationary, there are certain pockets that are and certain pockets that aren't, which still supported stagflation, particularly as tech continues to grow which puts a drain on a lot of natural resources. But instead now, it seems like the market is maybe telling us a different story that we have to be concerned about, and that is still the potential of a recession. So we're really watching a few areas that we always watch. One would be, of course, how the long bonds do. And we've seen them getting a little bit of a bid, but not enough to scream, oh my God, the Fed is nervous that we're going into recession, which is why money is filtering into that. It looks to me more like a little fear, but not on any strong basis. We watch, obviously, the silver and the gold ratio, which the silver has been outperforming, which still smells like inflation. Um, and we watch the oil market, which looks like right now more possibly recessionary or even disinflation. And when you put this all together, the dollar, which is looking a little bit weak, uh, and the transportation sector, which really has signaled this correction uh, several weeks ago, you yeah. put that all together and you have to you have to be aware which way we're going to go. And I think right now I'm still banking on the stagflation, but I would be definitely rotating maybe into some recession protection as we go forward. Look, there's a lot going on and you have to pay attention. There's Absolutely. no doubt. Um, push and pull. And, and, you know, to your point, because that's what you're really um, summarizing is a year that there, you know, some things are doing well and some things are not. Um, you have a lot of ideas for maybe what to do going forward. Um, we were promoing the idea about the weight loss drugs. So why don't we start with that? How are you playing the weight loss game? Well, so far, in terms of the actual pharmaceutical companies, they're still doing very well, Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk being the main two at this point. But there's still issues in terms of how much it's going to go into the mass market because of cost. And I think a lot of people are afraid, too, about side effects. So we believe, though, that that trend is getting stronger and stronger. And if you just talk to people who have had weight issues, you find more and more people are starting to admit that they're taking these drugs. So then you have to say, OK, what happens beyond the actual drug companies themselves that are producing that would make money? And where to ha what happens when people actually start to lose weight and keep the weight off? And I know that sounds roseate, but let's say that's, that's the idealistic picture. The cost goes down. Yeah. But then these people have to do things for themselves because now they feel better, right? So it could mean yeah. some kind of stuff for skin that has to be pulled up, wearing more makeup, taking better care of their hair, cosmetics, uh, dressing better, uh, taking just more personal care. And it's a trend that we see that could really add a dimension not only to the economy, but certainly to the consumerism and what benefits from that. So I know we've talked about ELF as yeah. being one. Let's talk about, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Nicole. I thought That's, you were finished. Yeah. No, I, okay. I just don't want to run out of time because you have about 1,001 great ideas that I want to sort of go through. <laughs> Let's see how many we can go through. How about NVIDIA? You're watching that in the world of autonomous vehicles too. 
Well, yeah, and also there's been talk again about Tesla and uh, Tesla having some kind of a deal with China in terms of the software for self-driving cars, which is why Tesla's on our radar, but it hasn't quite given us the signal yet. Um, yeah, but NVIDIA, here's a great example. The money to be made in NVIDIA was just spectacular. And there were so many times where you could have gotten in on even just minor dips. But now you have to say, what's happening with China? Are we going to have restrictions in terms of how much NVIDIA chips we're allowed to go to China? And so at, at over $1,100, you have hopefully you've taken some profit. So the way we're looking at right now is we're take, we've taken a lot off. We're riding these tails. And we're actually looking to see where money rotates. In a healthier economy, hopefully, that money rotates more into some of the, like we talked about, those small caps, well, it some of those consumers. Like you're buying these, right? You're watching them more. It sounds like you're more watching them, like NVIDIA could be frothy or Tesla. You're watching to see where they go with it. I mean, if anything's a buy, scream it out. We're trying to see what people may be buying. Um, that might be good buy ideas. I mean, I know you had Palantir as a name that you may be a buy. And I'll tell you, Dan Ives today was talking Palantir, the messy, Lionel Messi of the world of AI. I mean, he likes that stock a lot. How about cannabis? You like cat? Are there certain cannabis stocks that you would recommend to folks? Right. Well, in terms of buying right now, you're right. We're pretty well in the market and we have protective stops. In terms of going, we're still watching cannabis. And I, I, I think I've sort of landed on a great idea for people, which is to watch the big tobacco companies, which actually, if you look at something like Philip Morris right now, they have made a minor investment, at least of what they're reporting in the cannabis space. But we know that they're looking to see what happens legislative-wise. And we also know they're involved with the lobbyists. So Philip Morris has been trading between like 99 and 102, 103. I believe that if we start to see that stock move up, it's probably because that there is some legislation that's getting ready to actually pass instead of the political footballing that we've seen. So that's been on my radar. But like you said, not quite jumping in. We're in correction mode right now. I want to see what holds up and what dips to a good support level, and Philip Morris would certainly be high on that list. Yeah, how about, uh, I think you had cybersecurity, um, anything else I may have left out that, oh, crypto, crypto was one. We talked a little bit about cybersecurity. How about crypto? Do you like anything in the crypto world for folks? Well, I've been in and out of Coinbase all year, um, and I think that's a really good area to look at. Um, right now, it's again taking a correction, um, but if it holds up, really basically around the $200 level. We're still in it. It's not like we've got now, we've taken some profit. We would look to add, and these are the kind of stocks now that we're talking about, Philip Morris or Coinbase, or even some of the metals at this point, that it's probably okay to buy strength, which is kind of what we saw this year with Nvidia. The stocks that go into momentum seem to stay in momentum to a point. So that's why with Coinbase right now, rather than sit here and get in right now, we'll see what happens with the dip, and then we'll see what happens in terms of st stepping up. If it can get through 240, 250, that means it's probably going to go to 300. Me, Schneider, great to see you always at marketgauge.com. Love having you Thanks. on the show. Thanks so very much.